Good morning. Welcome to Sunrise Stroll Chat and Share on Pentecost. Welcome, Pentecost blessings here in Magdala at the sunrise chat and stroll. Stroll and chat and share. This delightful experience. Today there's a very, very, very gentle breeze like Mount Sinai and the Lord was in the breeze. We don't have the rushing wind of Pentecost physically, but may that rushing wind and flames of fire from heaven enter everyone's heart today. We are blessed by so many gifts from heaven. All of creation. Light each morning. Warmth. And especially our brothers and sisters, our parents and ch children our neighbors and friends, our fellow workers. Each one with their own major gift of life, of culture, of faith. There were some birds there, but they were small on the screen, but when you go back, you can check them out. So good morning on this beautiful sunrise morning. So I owe you a surprise for almost two weeks. Well, about 10 days maybe. I was promising. And then some, I want to do it a few days, then I forgot. Then somebody reminded me, and I want to do that for you this morning. And I need to tell you we have another surprise tomorrow morning. But let us take a word today from the good scriptures. So we're right at the beginning of chapter 2 of the Acts of the Apostles. That's like the major classical description of Pentecost. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. 
They were there for Shavuot, for the feast of the 50 days after Passover, the feast of the wheat harvest. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq, Iran, Judea, around Jerusalem, Cappadocia, in present day Turkey area, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, remember Simon who helped Jesus carry his cross, as well as travelers from Rome, Jews and converts to Judaism, from Crete, Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. I wonder how many languages are participating this morning here with us. Do we have our friend from East Malaysia, from Borneo, from Mexico, from Jerusalem? So many people all over the world. In a way, this little meeting every morning is like a little Pentecost. And that is the church today, and it was since a long time. Very quickly, really, in the time of the New Testament, there were communities all over the Mediterranean Rim. And there are traditions that some of the apostles went as far as Armenia, Thomas to India, and so on. And there were communities all over. This good news spread very quickly and the world needed it so badly. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. That's our psalm from 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is filled with your creatures. And we hear a lot of them around here. <laughs> All these little birds, and then inside the waters, and under the grass, and all the flowers and the different trees. The earth is full of your creatures. Sometimes we live in some types of artificial entertainment and we don't realize all the magnificent creatures around us. And the stars outside the earth and we can see them and this is our closest star, the sun. 93 million miles away. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the Lord be glad in all his works, pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, their spirit, the same word, and, and uh, they give up their breath, they give up their ghost, you know, if you take away their breath, their spirit, they perish and return to their dust. 
when you send forth your spirit they are created and you renew the face of the earth people I want to invite you for a little walk let's stroll this morning here on Pentecost in Magdala Maybe I can keep the camera this way here. So I want to show you that surprise. And it's not Soter, because she's not a surprise anymore. Soter, S-O-T-E-R. It's actually the Greek word for savior. There's a field of theology called Soterology. Some people say when they know Soter very well, they have a degree in Soterology. But that's much of a joke, you know. These are pods. Look at the size of them. This beautiful tree with all its pods. Look at all these pods. I want to get one look here because the angle is right for you to see something also beautiful that you know already and then we'll go to the surprise. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. So I like to picture this from this corner because you can see the reflection in the water. Come on. Oh, I have it down to the maximum. I didn't realize that. So I have to back up a little bit here. So that you can get the whole deal in one, in one glance. So, you know, the great gifts God has given the human mind to have the idea and then to make it work and the waters are flowing also the spirit is symbolized by water and there's a beautiful ancient homily telling us about how the water comes and is assimilated by every plant and it's given so much life by every every plant has re received so much life in its own form through the water and the Holy Spirit comes and every person is inspired in their own wonderful way the Lord brings each one to sanctity to holiness through the work of the Spirit I see I have a battle going on here with the, our favorite olive tree, with um, uh, the battery, a battle with the battery, a battery battle. 
so I'm taken by surprise there a little bit. But look at these red flowers here for Pentecost, a bush on fire with these bougainvillea. But that's not the surprise. So we're getting close to the surprise. So these are bougainvillea, very beautiful. But look at this surprise over here, the big surprise, the red tree, a flame of red for Pentecost. This is a Ponciana tree. It's amazing about a little over a week ago, I guess around the time I started telling you, there were just two clusters of flowers down here at the bottom, maybe around here. And then within 40 hours, 48 hours at the most, the entire tree was a flame, a flame of red. So then a couple of days ago, I could have shown it to you, but I decided I'd wait for Pentecost morning because this is the color of the fire of the Holy Spirit. The vestments today for mass will be red. So that's the color we always use for the Holy Spirit. And so here we have this entire tree. Somebody asked me yesterday, how come this tree doesn't have any flowers? It's the same breed, the same variety of tree. And I do not know the answer. But I think we can also pray for all the people who need the Holy Spirit, who do not know the Holy Spirit, like we read in the Acts of, Policy, in Acts of the Apostles. Oh, we never heard there was a Holy Spirit. And then they were confirmed and the, were filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'll give you a little closer look here, lifting up the camera at this beauty. So people, I'm just going to head back a little bit here because I'm down to very, very few percentage points on the camera. It may break down. Tomorrow morning, we have a very special guest, uh, another pastor who actually brought Pastor Bina last week. He came with his wife, Pastor Jan and his wife Mies. They're from the Netherlands. And he has served in many countries and even here with the Arab Christian communities and Israeli Christian communities and he is uh, a man filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit uh, he's a young man he looks young but he's a great-grandfather and uh, and his wife is a great-grandmother they are great-grandparents and so we are blessed that they will join us tomorrow morning so hopefully little by little we will have guests uh, on our morning stroll and chat. I think the Spirit is moving this. The Spirit is moving lots of things. There are lots of challenges in our world, world today, lots of sufferings. And the Gospel passage we have today is from John with Jesus appearing in the upper room on Easter Sunday evening and breathing on them. He breathed on them. We had that word already today and receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Extraordinary mystery of ministry, of forgiveness, administration of forgiveness. That's been practiced in the church ever since that time and how much our world needs that today. We need to pray for those suffering from violence, from so many challenges. May the Lord bless you today keep you safe, hold you in the palm of his hand, fill you with his breath, bring you to a fullness of life, a flowering in your heart and soul of all his gifts.
And the greatest gift is charity. And every family needs that. Every heart needs that. Every face that looks at us and to understand what we're saying need charity. Even if they don't understand the language we speak, they need charity. This is the language of the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Understanding, knowledge, counsel, fortitude, piety, and the wondrous awe before the Lord. Filled with charity, to know the other, to have the wise wisdom, to understand understanding, the ability to counsel, to encourage, to strengthen. It's been a super delight here with you today. And I hope that your day will be blessed, spirit-filled, and a blessing to everybody around you. That when you breathe, the people will sense the spirit. We can't speak without breath. So our words are coming through the spirit, naturally through the, the breath we have. And the words come from the spirit, from understanding something and explaining it and expressing it. And may the Holy Spirit coming from the Father, and the Word, Fill us with life. God bless you today. See you later, alligator.